When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Truck's advanced camera technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views, so you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. You know when you're really stressed or not feeling so great about your life or about yourself? Talking to someone who understands can really help. But who is that person? How do you find them? Where do you even start? Talkspace. Talkspace makes it easy to get the support you need. With Talkspace, you can go online, answer a few questions about your preferences, and be matched with a therapist. And because you'll meet your therapist online, you don't have to take time off work or arrange childcare. You'll meet on your schedule, wherever you feel most at ease. If you're depressed, stressed, struggling with a relationship, or if you want some counseling for you and your partner, or just need a little extra one-on-one support, Talkspace is here for you. Plus, Talkspace works with most major insurers, and most insured members have a $0 copay. No insurance? No problem. Now, get $80 off of your first month with promo code SPACE80 when you go to Talkspace.com. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com. Save $80 with code SPACE80 at Talkspace.com. Hello and welcome to 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast. I'm Stephen Topless and it's Friday the 13th of September. Unlucky for some, but not for you, because it's time for your Friday Five. Forest might not have been in action due to the international break, but there's still plenty to talk about as we bring you the big stories making the news over the past seven days. I'm joined by the Maradona of the Midlands. Welcome. Thank you, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be here. Now let's hear the top stories making the news at the city ground this week. It's over to Jamie Martin. Hi, this is Jamie Martin with this week's top five forest stories from the 1865 news desk. To start this week's news, Gibbs White has got his England cap, first forest England call-up since 1997. Nottingham Forest star Morgan Gibbs White was called up to the England squad recently by new head coach, interim head coach, Lee Carsley as England faced Ireland and Finland. During England's 2-0 win over Ireland with Grealish and Rice the scorers, Gibbs White came on within around a quarter of an hour to spare, almost gaining two assists with his creative flair playing a part in the late stages of the game, a fantastic cameo, unfortunately not earning him any minutes against Finland the game after though. Gibbs White is the first player to receive the call-up and play in the three-line shirt since Stuart Pearce in 1997, another milestone in Forrest's recent successes. Now the second piece of news this week, Willie Bolly has been injured during international break, his head coach has told us. In some rather frustrating news, Willie Bolly has returned from international duty with Ivory Coast, defending AFCON champions with an injury which is set to keep him sidelined for the near future. The national team's head coach, Emma's Fay, said that the centre-half had suffered a calf injury and would have to leave the national team camp and return to the medical team at Nottingham Forest, where he will seek further assessment, diagnosis and later treatment. Bolly's record with injury in international football hasn't improved, but Forest depth has, meaning his short stint off the pitch won't be too much of a concern for Forest selection. Now more on the developments to the container corner stand have been shared online. With another few weeks until football returns to the city ground with Forest facing Liverpool and Brighton away from home, the club are working on key developments to infrastructure, including the previously mentioned container stand. Hosting corporate entities, the container stand aims to improve Forest matchday revenue and see the club fight PSR on more fronts than simply the use of transfer income as a means to ensure they are within set guidelines. Encompassing five levels, the container stand sits in between Trent End and Brian Clough stand with more cosmetic features to be added and now confirmed by the club. Now these new updates will include the likes of banqueting tables and other interests for the corporate sector. So more updates to come very soon with tickets going on sale also 
very soon. Now the fourth piece of Forest news this week, Anthony Alanga has confirmed he's happy at the club. This week, misinformation spread around social media suggested that Anthony Alanga was hinting at a move to Newcastle. However, after some digging, we found the real quotes, which ironically confirm his happiness at the club. In the interview with Swedish um, outlet Football's Canal, Alanga said the environment in Nottingham is good. Obviously, if Newcastle are interested, it means I'm doing well. But Nottingham, Forest are also a big club who have won two European Cups, even though it was before I was born. He also spoke of his friendship with Toon striker Alexander Isak, insisting that while Isak had mentioned it to him, he was committed to his contract at Forest. And while he has great chemistry with the striker, he is completely happy in Nottingham as a city. Now the final piece of news this week, Forest face a tough test at Anfield as the Premier League returns. The Reds of Nottingham face the Reds of Merseyside this weekend in a much anticipated fixture in game week four. Forest are unbeaten this season so far, but they haven't beaten Liverpool at home since 1969. And by home, I mean Anfield. Yes, that is right, 1969. The last time Forest won, Bill Shankly was manager of Liverpool. And since then, Forest haven't managed a win at Anfield since. The Reds did beat Liverpool in their first season back in the Premier League under Steve Cooper, though 1-0 at the City ground. Forest do have an injury, of course, to Willie Bolly, but other than that, at this stage, have no further injury concerns as far as we know. In his latest press conference, Nuno spoke about the tough challenge, challenge that is Liverpool, but stressed the readiness of his players. He also praised Gibbs White's England call-up, even describing his potential as a youngster at Wolves, lauding his ambition within football. Now, we don't often do this, but there is a bit of extra news to add this week, and it's really, really positive news. Kick it out. Our podcast colleague, Ellie, takes part in national campaign to kick sexism out of football. Continuing her excellent work in fighting sexism within the game, Ellie Mollison's latest venture is working with Kick It Out, a campaign to completely remove sexism out of football and create a better environment for female football fans, players and stakeholders in the sport in general. The latest video from the campaign showcases a roles reverse scenario where female fans go to make comments insulting the football intellect of the man just because of his gender. The video fantastically portrayed the very unfortunate reality for thousands of females within football and what they must suffer while supporting their respective team. It further emphasises the effect such inappropriate acts have on the mental health of those victims of sexism also and the impact it has on their willingness to visit such games in the future. Now, Elliot has partook in numerous campaigns, with this being the latest in one of, in my view, the most impactful videos detailing not only the effects of sexism, but also just how commonplace it is within football, even in the modern day. Congratulations to Ellie on her continued fantastic work and hopefully within the near future, football will become a more accepting and more safe place for women to enjoy the sport that we all love so much. Now that is the latest from the 1865 News Desk. I'm Jamie Martin. Be sure to catch up with me on Twitter slash X via at I'm Jamie Martin. Updates on Nottingham Forest related news throughout the week. Thanks, Jamie. Let's have a look at those stories in more detail now in the company of the Maradona of the Midlands. And starting with our top story, Morgan Gibbs-White making his debut for England in the Nations League match against Ireland. So Forrest's very own Morgan Gibbs-White earned his first call up to the England senior squad last week under the interim management of Lee Carsley. Gibbs White came off the bench in the first game of the international break against Ireland at the Aviva Stadium, got about 15 minutes or so towards the end of the game, and he caught the eye, didn't he? Yeah, didn't he do well? That's what I thought anyway. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he came on, he didn't look nervous at all, he made an impact, he was getting involved, creating chances, looked like he might even get a goal at, at certain points, and uh, yeah, he didn't look, look too out of place. Uh, obviously, you have to temper it slightly by saying it was against the sort of championship standard Republic of Ireland side, but um so he, he would have dominated it. It was we weren't playing Spain or anybody, but no, he, he did all that could be asked of him. Uh gave a good account to himself and he's he always looks so keen and eager, doesn't he? He's probably if, if you knew him in real life at school or something, you'd probably really hate him. He's a really annoying sort of person who's uh, always always up for something, always always keen to do something and uh, making you look bad. But um, but no, as as a, as far as a, being a footballer goes, I suppose it's a it's a good attribute to have, and uh, we're we're lucky to have him at Forest. And his England debut was just reward for his form for Forest, not just this season, but 
over the past couple of years. And in doing so, he becomes the first Forest player since Stuart Pearce in 1997 to win a full England cap. Now, he didn't feature in the second game of the international break on Tuesday night against Finland. Were you a bit disappointed to not see him, Maradona, or pleased that he's going to be fit and fresh for Forest this weekend? Um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but then then they gave debuts to a few other players as well. So um, I guess fair is fair. He, he got he got a turn, he got a chance, and uh, some of the other players that came on 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 Tuesday night they 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 would have been pretty in same position as him. So he get to having been in the squad, he get to get some minutes. That was one of the uh, great criticisms that Gareth Southgate used to have. Like he'd, he'd take players along and not give them any time at all, which must have been very very demoralising. Uh, for people, um, there seems sort of, sort of really no, no no logic to that at all, uh, especially in friendlies and stuff. Um, it was so infuriating sometimes watching the Southgate matches, as well as as well as boring. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's good for Forest. He'll, he'll come into it full of confidence and uh, with a fresh freshness to him because he's had a, a clear week and he'll need all that for, for <laughs> Anfield, <laughs> which is going to be uh, some test. It will, and we will come on to that a little bit later. And let's hope that Morgan Gibbs-White can kick on and add to his one England cap, and hopefully so, with Forrest. So our next story, we stay with international duty, but we go to the Ivory Coast now. And Forrest defender Willy Bolly, who has picked up an injury while on international duty. It's a calf injury. He's returned to receive treatment at Forrest but it looks like he's now going to be out for a few weeks. Now, what I'll say to you, Maradona, is of course this is a blow to Forrest, but it's not as much of a blow now as it would have been last season because Forrest have bolstered their defensive ranks and perhaps so for situations like this. Yeah, um, we we would have probably been a first-choice starter last season. So uh, this season, it it looks like it's panning out that he's going to be uh, one of the subs. Um, so in that respect, it's not as big a blow. And also, uh, we brought in uh, Morata from Benfica last week. So that that's um, maybe opens up a chance for him to make his debut sooner rather than later. Uh, maybe just coming off the bench as we're winning one nil in the 90th minute at Anfield at the weekend. Just to just a brilliant rear guard action. Just throw everybody on all the defenders on. Um, uh, but yeah, it's not as big as well as, as it could have been. I mean, we don't know how serious it is. It may have just been a precaution. He came back for some, some expert treatment from our, our physio department to uh, get him fit for the weekend. Um, he, he is always a little bit injury prone. I think they, they say that ever since he, he got COVID, he's not physically ever been the same. He's sort of always been susceptible to uh, more injuries and uh, ill health and, and fitness problems since then. Um, but hopefully it won't be too long before he's uh, back on the bench and uh, competing for a first team start, starting spot again. Yes, and hopefully from Forrest's point of view, it won't be that much of an injury blow and we will see Willy Body return in a couple of weeks' time. It does raise those questions again of international breaks at these this time of the season and the, the potential for injuries. It's just lucky for Forrest that on this occasion... This injury has come in an area of the field where they are now quite well stocked. Big news at the city ground itself this week, and we have seen images, first of all, and now the real thing in situ, container corner, the new corporate stand, which has been built to improve Forest's PSR revenue as they look to strengthen and compete in the Premier League and bring in more money however they can. It's made up of old shipping containers, five levels in total, and it sits between the Brian Clough stand and the Trent end with a lovely view out from the corner vantage point there for the the corporate seats. So we've got what this has done is increased Forest's capacity, and it looks like it will push it over that magic 30,000 mark. Uh, Forest don't play at home again until the end of September when they face Fulham. So this has probably been a good time to get it installed and and up and running and built and all that type of thing. 
And yes, Forest have a new stand, Maradona. Yeah, um, I was initially I've been quite quite critical of it because I, I don't think football should be about just making as much money as you can. Um, I thought they could have uh, before I saw the plans or anything. I thought I was I was a bit bit miffed that they hadn't filled in the corner with more seats for spectators. But having seen well normal normal fans, but having seen the images, it looks like they have filled in that corner, sort of brought back the old Trent Ten corner. That we used to have back in the uh, late eighties, early nineties. Um, so there looks like there is going to be some extra seating there for for ordinary fans. Um, the idea in in principle is nothing new. You know, I've, I've seen sort of corners filled in with exec- a block of executive boxes of other grounds in Villa Park, maybe Salhurst Park. But I suppose the shipping container thing is is a bit more innovative. Um, if it if it's environmentally more environment environmentally friendly to do that, I'm all for that. I'm, I don't. I don't want to see them wasting uh, carbon footprint on uh, concrete and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I hope hope it's a success and they can sell them out and um, and uh, make make some money out of it for the club. Um, yeah, as long as I was, my only concern was that it was sort of excluding normal fans, but they seem to have uh, taken that into account as well now. So I, I've got nothing to moan about now on on the subject, <laughs> <laughs> apart from maybe you know, the general theme of uh, money ruining football. But apart yeah. from that, it's, I'm OK with it. <laughs> and if they, this is Forrest, so we'll soon give you something to moan about yeah. before you know it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the other thing to factor in as well with this this stand is that the, the sort of temporary construction of it points to the fact that Forrest down the line do want to renovate the city ground further the Peter Taylor stand being the most obvious and important phase of that development as and when planning comes through and, and it's all agreed. And we've, we've spoken at length over the past couple of months about all the different facets of that. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see the Maranakis uh, penthouse. I, I, hope, I hope they show us uh, images of that sooner rather than later. I, I, I can't, I can't wait to see what's in there. I wonder if there's got hot tubs and, uh, Maybe uh, well, I don't know what else. I don't know some sort of a bakery, uh, bakery, <laughs> all sorts of baked goods in there. Yeah, just the, the whole <laughs> the idea of having a whole suite just for uh, one man and his family is uh, it's so decadent. It's like uh, something out of ancient Rome, really. <laughs> the, like an emperor. The, maybe you'll have people feeding him grapes or olives or something uh, while he's up there. But uh, I, I hope we get to see inside. <laughs> Let's now move on to the next story that Jamie brought us, and it concerns Anthony Alanga. Now, according to reports, he was subject to a bid from Newcastle United on deadline day. They wanted to take him. Forrest rejected that bid. And there's been a, a bit of an update where Alanga has responded to this interest by Newcastle United by saying that his head has not been turned and he is happy to stay at Forest. Now, Newcastle initially inquired about Alanga's availability when they were brokering the deal to sell Elliot Anderson to Forest at the end of June, but the talks ended with Newcastle signing goalkeeper Odysseus Vlacadimos instead. They then seemed to come back with another bid on deadline day. Alanga has been away on international duty with Alexander Isak in Sweden, of course, recently. And uh, Isak might well have had a word in the winger's ear. But Alanga says he's happy at Forest, And that's good news, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I think he, he's got an important part to play uh, for us this season. It, it was it was a worrying 24 hours when the news uh, broke of uh, Newcastle's interest on the last day of uh, deadline day. I was, I was, I was half expecting to wake up the next morning to, to, uh, to, to the news that he'd, he'd signed for Newcastle at eleven oh one p.m. or something. Um, but now I'm glad he's he's staying at Forest and uh, he's going to get regular football here. And uh, there's no reason why he should want to move at the moment. I think it is is helping his career being at Forest. Um, obviously, it's flattering. A club like Newcastle, they're they're a big club. You, you can't deny that. You know, they get fifty odd thousand people there every week, um, and with the money behind them now, they, I'm sure they could offer them a very, very 
lucrative and attractive um, package to uh, to join. But at the moment, I think he's he's done well by sticking at Forest. And um, I mean, if if Alexander Isak's the reason to go and move there, I I wouldn't necessarily uh, be banking on him staying there. I think there's probably bigger clubs than um, Newcastle hovering around looking at him. So I don't know if long term if his future is going to be there, but. Um, it's 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 what it's what happens when you have good players. Uh, they get linked with the other teams, and it's something you sort of got to live with. Um, the sort of twenty four hour news coverage and the internet and Twitter and everything else is a lot more sort of news. It's not not like the good old days where you sort of wait for the newspapers to come out and there'd be a story about your player being linked to such a good club. But it's, it's it's constant now, so it is a bit more stressful in that in that manner. But I think, yeah, I think he's done well to stay here and, and hopefully we can uh, move up the table and, and make it make it a hard choice for him to ever want to leave if he if he does if he does ever have another choice again. Forrest have brought in reinforcements on the wings this summer when you think of likes of Jota Silva and Ramon Sosa. So do you think that could have been a bit of succession planning for Forrest to had Alanga moved on, either in the early stages of the summer or on deadline day. Is that the club preparing potentially for him to, to move on to another club? I think there has to be an element of that. You always have to sort of plan ahead. Uh, but also I think it's just to, just to make us stronger, give us more options. Um, having having those other wingers in the club now gives the option of Alanga playing through the middle sometime. Um, and it gives us the option of sort of switching players, switching wings and, and, and giving fullbacks different problems. And um, just keeping everybody fresh. Uh, these sort of wingers are notoriously getting hamstring injuries from all, from that electric pace they have, that sort of el- elasticity sort of go sometimes on a cold winter's day. So um, I think, yeah, there is an element of succession planning, but but I, I, I prefer to think of it as we're building a competitive squad, uh, for the time being at least anyway. Every day when you log into ChumbaCasino.com, the ultimate online social casino, you get a free daily bonus. Imagine if you got daily bonuses in other parts of your life. I chose French fries over loaded French fries. I asked Stuart from accounting about his weekend, even though I don't care. I updated my operating system without having to call tech support. Collect your free daily bonus at ChumbaCasino.com now. And live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. You're listening to 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast. So, Antti Langer is staying at Forest and he confirms that he is happy to stay at the city ground. Let's now look ahead to Forest's next Premier League fixture and linking in with the next story that Jamie brought us. Liverpool versus Forest at Anfield this weekend. In the Premier League, Forrest returning to Premier League duty on Saturday. So 3pm kickoff at Anfield. And the interesting thing about Forrest versus Liverpool, there's obviously such a, a rich history between the two clubs. But Forrest haven't beaten Liverpool at Anfield in any game since 1969. Which, when you consider all the success that Forrest have had in the intervening years... Um, not all of the intervening years, of course, as we all know. Um, but even in the years of Brian Clough, when Forest were at their strongest and going toe to toe with Liverpool, they they couldn't beat them then at Anfield. It's 1969 was the the last victory for Forest there. Do you think they've got a chance of ending that record this weekend? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a tough place to go. I think. I think the. Uh... The crowd really, really makes it makes it a hard place for opposition teams to uh, get anything from. And let's just face it, they're they're a, a wonderful team with some brilliant, brilliant players. They've got some of the best players in the world. Um, I mean, you talk about some of the great teams Liverpool have had down the years, and at the moment they've probably got two or three, maybe four players on on, the, on a given day, which would fit into their all time teams. I think, think of um, Allison in goal. Uh, Van Dijk in defence and Mo Salah uh, up front, they they'd be um, not out of place in any Liverpool team throughout history. So it just it gives you it's a measure of the sort of 
how hard a task it is. I, I remember the most painful one for me was in the mid 90s. I think it was 95, 96 season, something like that. When um, I think before I, we went up there on either Boxing Day or New Year's Day, something like that. And we were 2 0 up at half time. And I, I just, as a young man, I, I let my I let the hopes get the better of me and the dreams uh, of dreaming of three points coming home. And they, okay, obviously they came back and beat us. I think it was three two or four two in the end in the second half. And uh, <laughs> but it was um, even with that great team, we, we couldn't we couldn't beat them. Um, so it, it's going to be tough. Um, but you never know. You never know. The reason why football is so popular is because there is unpredictability about it. But uh, I would be shocked if we if we get a win up there. <laughs> it would be nice, though. It was Barry Lyons who scored both goals the last time Forrest won at Anfield. Two goals to nil on the 15th of February, 1969. And if you've ever seen that picture of Ian St. John and two Forest players dressed in that classic 19, late 1960s blue away kit with the snow and the orange ball... That's the game that Forrest won, and that's Forrest's last win at Anfield. So that's a, a nice nugget of trivia for you there. Um, and do have a look for that picture if you haven't seen it. It's a, it's a great shot. But yes, Liverpool coming on to them. They've won three out of three in the Premier League this season, made a really strong start under new manager on a slot. They've scored seven goals. They haven't conceded any yet. And already they are... Nine on nine points at the top of the table alongside Man City. But Forrest, when they've gone to Anfield in recent seasons, they've given a good account of themselves, haven't they, since they've been back in the Premier League? Yeah. Um, the first season, especially when uh, Nico Williams scored, it, it looked like we, we, were, we, we were very unlucky not to get something out of the game. Last season, we were doing well until uh, Marullo... Uh, made a bit of a, a bit of an error, and, and then the game sort of ran away from us. I mean, you you could say that because it's come after an international break, um, maybe it gives us a, a bit of a chance because their players will have been maybe away, travelling a distance, and uh, they won't be as fresh and won't have had t- chance to train as much. But unfortunately, we've got 14 internationals as well now, so it's the same problem applies to us. Um, so that little bit of advantage where we would have had, we weren't very good. I didn't have many international players. Has gone now. Um, but yeah, it's it. We it. I mean, I'll put it back to what I always say: if you run hard on the opposition, uh, run further, quicker, and work harder than them, you've always got a chance. So that's a minimum for us to have to do. They have to just match Liverpool and then exceed their work rate um, and not make any silly mistakes. And then you've got, you've always got a chance. Then you've always got a chance. And there's no further injury concerns for Forrest apart from the injury to Willy Bolly. So looks like Nuno will be able to take a strong squad up to Liverpool and play the team that he wants to. And it'll be interesting to see how he sets up against a team which, in in fairness, have looked very good so far this season. And we look forward to seeing how it, Forrest get on at Anfield on Saturday. And now to our final extra story for this week's Friday Five, and it involves our very own Ellie Mollison taking part in a national campaign to kick out sexism in football. And it's called Kick It Out, with the aim of creating a better environment for women in the game. And important work, important work that still needs to to be ongoing, Maradona, because for all the, the strides that have been made over the last, what, 10, 15 years, there, there's still pockets of football which perhaps aren't the most welcoming for female fans and it's initiatives like this that seek to put that right. Yeah, I mean, really, you shouldn't need a campaign like this or a video like this um, to solve a problem because it shouldn't be a problem. It's just about normal human decency. Um, when you're living in a in a modern society, these things shouldn't be happening. People people shouldn't be feeling intimidated. Shouldn't be getting uh, catcalled just because of their sex. Uh, but there are a lot of moronic people in our society. There's you, you see them every day. They walk among us. They're the people who drop litter or don't pick up their dog poop, their dog's poop, and uh, fly tip and uh, swear, walk down the street effing and blinding with their kids uh, close at hand. We see them every day. So. Unfortunately, we do need it. And if you haven't seen the video, I would I would recommend you search it out. 
because uh, it is it, it is thought provoking. It does make you think. It's um, it's really unacceptable that those sort of things happen to women still in this day and age. Um, and it's it's a good video, and it and it really makes makes you think. Um, and it um, unfortunately it is still a needed and very um important campaign so uh, we i think we're all here at 1865 we're all behind it and congratulations to molly she did a good little acting job there and i did uh, she's got another another string to her bow i think this time next year she might be uh at the oscars you never know <laughs> <laughs> multi-talented indeed yeah and we will leave this week's friday five there on that note and my thanks to the maradona of the Midlands for joining me. Thanks to to Jamie Martin for providing this week's news roundup. And thank you, listener, for joining us as ever. We will be back in your feeds with a match report after the Liverpool game. We've also got our women's football show where we review the fortunes of the Nottingham Forest's women's team. And we have our monthly roundups as well throughout the season so please do do subscribe if you haven't already to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our latest content thanks again for listening and we will see you next time Podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.